we're in Fish Lake Murray today. This is our home lake. It's uh, it's about 10 minutes from the house. Sometimes we'll sometimes we'll head offshore and we'll fish some of the uh, some of the reefs and things like that. But today it's just we we've got a little bit of time today because tomorrow is a huge storm's coming in, and we want to make sure that we get some time out to fish this week. Tomorrow we're supposed to have 35, 40 mile an hour winds. And we're going to have rain starting at like three in the morning. It's going to go till probably seven or eight at night, and then uh, it's going to drop and get. It's warm. We've got great, you know, great warm wind coming out of the south, I guess. But it's going to get real cold later in the week, and uh, and it's going to be windy. So anything over about 15 miles an hour, I don't usually like to fish. So I thought we'd get out on the lake today for a little bit and uh, see if we can find any fish. Honestly, Lake Murray is a uh, is a tough fishery. It's a tough place to catch fish, uh, especially bass, although it has a fantastic striper fishery. So we'll see how we do today. Um, what we're going to go for today, and I'll, I'll, I'll talk about this again a little bit, what we're really shooting for today is pickerel. And pickerel are a riot to catch in the winter. And uh, this, is, this is early February, or early January, and the pickerel fishing is, uh, is all kinds of fun in the winter. They strike hard and they fight hard and uh, you can't have much more fun than that. So we've got all kinds of gear for offshore fishing and inshore fishing and lake fishing and river fishing and fly fishing. And we do, uh, you know, admittedly, we probably fish more as a family than we do hunt. This is a new addition to the rig uh, in the last in the last year, I used to get really aggravated when we would go fishing offshore because we'd get blown off the reefs. We'd try to anchor, or we'd try to uh, we'd try to to fish out there, but we could never stay on a spot longer than a, a couple of minutes. And so I'd end up spending my whole time moving around, constantly restarting the boat, or pulling up, trying to pull up the anchor, or whatever. And we'd have to move again to try to get back on the reef. So in the spring of last year, so the spring of 23, I got one of these uh, Minn, Co Minn Kota Tarovo trolling motors, saltwater trolling motors, and let me tell you, this has been a game changer. It completely changes the way we fish, and it makes fishing, uh, especially in windy conditions like we have today, where we've got, you know, probably, I think we're probably 10 to probably around 10 mile an hour winds with occasional gusts. It has completely changed this experience. Check this guy out in the in the pontoon over here. This is a little barge. He's got he's probably got I don't know how much weight. It's set, certainly several hundred dollars, maybe five or six hundred dollars worth of lumber on the front of that little barge, which is effectively two pontoon boats slashed together. And we saw him at the ramp when we were pushing off. And uh, I'm surprised he's out here in this. This is I mean we've got some little tiny white caps on the lake. I mean not much, just a little bit. But I don't think I'd be out here in that barge doing this today. I mean you got to make a living, I guess. And uh, Somebody's got to make their money, but today is not the day I would have chosen to do this. I would have picked a different day. Of course, in light of the huge storms we're supposed to get tomorrow, maybe he figures he's better go get the boat put away today and take that risk. But anyway, good luck, dude. <laughs> You're going to need it. Fortunately, the spot we're heading to is straight ahead of us, and it looks like in that little cove, there's just enough wind break there to make it calm where we're going to fish. So that's good. That's why I like this spot. There's a bald eagle flying over. There's a couple of them that nest here. One of the other cool things about fishing here is the wildlife is awesome. So this island that we're coming up on here, uh, I don't remember the name of it right now, but uh, we have camped here a couple times, as our family has, and uh, it's, a, it's a pretty cool spot. Normally, obviously, the water level is higher, but you can go and set up right there at the top of the water line, and uh, there's some flat spots. There's a pet cemetery up here on the island as well, and. Uh, 
anyway pretty cool all right let's drop the trolling motor before it gets before we get too close in here so what's really cool about this is it's got the anchor button here and this is only on the Terra Nova. Well, I don't know if it's the only, only on the Terra Nova, but it's definitely on the Terra Nova. So we hit the anchor button right here, and it pulls GPS out of the motor itself, and it just keeps us here, which is awesome. So if you'll notice up there, the motor is now adjusting itself around and correcting our location based on where I told it to put us. And so it's going to hold us right here in this spot. Now, right here, we're at about 13 feet. And if we look at the fish finder, we're actually marking fish coming up the hill as we came into the cove it comes up real sharp and so we're actually marking some fish right here at the top so we'll see what we can do there it looks like those guys are holding at about nine feet uh, right off the back of the boat so we'll come back around to them in a minute there's a bunch of macro algae up here in this cove and uh, we're going to go over and see if we can get up in the middle of that and the uh, the pickerel and the bass they like to hang out in that, uh, it's a big broadleaf algae. I don't even know if you call it an algae, but it's, anyway, it's an underwater plant. And they like to hang out in that stuff right on the edges. And then they'll, and then they'll uh, stalk whatever happens to swim by. And so this is uh, always a lot of fun to fish in here. Sometimes of the year we do great in here, and sometimes of the year we get completely skunked. So hopefully today we don't. Hopefully today we at least will bring one fish up for you guys to see. Not that you haven't seen a fish before, but uh, anyway, so that I don't look like an idiot coming out here. And fishing but then again the name of the channel is IRL Sportsman right so the whole point of this is is being out and doing things in real life and this is what fishing looks like uh, sometimes you catch and sometimes you don't and uh, probably for me it's less often that I don't or sorry more often than I don't and less often than I do uh, but you know what I just love being out here I love being on the water I love being out in the woods uh, I like I, I love having a, a, a rifle or a, or a, or a shotgun or a a uh, fishing rod in my hands and just being out and enjoying the weather and enjoying the uh, you know just the outdoors that eagle we saw coming up was freaking awesome um, even I mean I've seen them here a hundred times and every time they're still just impress me and I just love being out here so yeah let's see what we can let's see what we can catch today I'm glad the wind is in our favor so I'm gonna flip this Terra Nova around and I'm gonna point us in the other direction so that it just stops us from moving forward right there and then I'm going to put it on anchor mode. And it will not move us, or sorry, it will not let us move from this spot, which is fantastic. When you're fishing alone uh, and you don't have to bother dropping the anchor yourself or fighting, you know, whatever it is that's going on, having that thing is, makes all the difference. Now see, I was hoping to get out here and not get wet, but we hit some waves coming in and now my, my rods are soaking wet. So that'll make this a little more interesting. I'm not really confident that this lure is going to do much for us, but it's already tied on, so let's go ahead and let's go ahead and give it a go. It goes a little deeper. It's got a large bill off the front, a large spoon off the front, and so I'm not sure how that's going to do. We may end up getting into the weeds real quick, and we'll see. So this is what this is a little small piece, but this is what we've got here. And if any of you know what this is, please drop it in the comments. But this is basically what's under here. This is really long weeds, and they're probably, and these leaves, they're probably a foot and a half, two feet long each. And there's just thousands of them in the, in the bass, and the, the fish love to hang out in them. So if you happen to know what those are, let me know, because I don't remember the name. And so out in the winter, what, we, what I do basically is I'll cast out with some kind of a, a diver or a stick bait. I don't use worms a lot. I've, I've never gotten good at it. And then I'll just do a real slow retrieve. Just bring it back as slowly as I can. I figure the water's cold, and maybe I'm wrong. If I'm wrong, you guys tell me. But I figure that the fish are probably not operating at full speed like they do in the summer. They're not as quick and as agile as they usually are in the summer, which means that they're not moving quick either. And so I gotta give them a minute to, to see it and think about it before they jump up and hit it. And so I try to go really slow, as slow as I can possibly go. Uh, the founder of Rapala actually talked about this in one of his letters years ago. Um, and they're, you know, they're from, it's either Denmark or Sweden. And he said basically the way to fish his lures, now granted this is when he founded the company, whatever it was, 80 years ago. He said the way to fish his lures was to throw them out there and then bring them back just as slow as you possibly can. Well, fishing technology has come a long way since then. So 
who knows, but it's worked for me in the winter. All right, so nice little pickerel, not bad for a winter fishing. Love that, not too big, but lots of fun because they like to fight. So there we go, one down. Fish on, fish on. Come on, what is it? It's got some weight. It smacked it, here it comes. Yeah, another pickerel, a little one. Oh, it came right off, look at that. That's just how I like them. So I don't have to touch them. <laughs> Cause those teeth are nasty. Look at that guy go. Caught him in the shallows too, he wasn't, uh, he wasn't very deep. I bet he was probably in four feet of water or less. Probably looking for the warmth and some dumb little fish to swim by to eat. Cause these guys are aggressive. If you stop flopping around, I'll send you back home. You know, I'm sure that some of you guys out there are actually, will actually grab these guys and you know how to do it. But if you look in their mouth right here, I don't know if you can see it. Look at all the little teeth. Now this guy is only a foot long. Some of these guys are much larger to the point that you wouldn't go anywhere near their teeth. Look like little snake's teeth in the middle. But anyway, they, uh, as I said at the beginning, they are a riot to catch when they fight. Because in the winter, they fight and the bass don't. The bass are like little logs, it seems like. You catch a bass in the winter and they're like, oh, you got me, darn. But the pickerel, they're like, nah, I'm out of here, dude. And they'll fight you the whole freaking way, which is why they're much more fun to catch in the winter than the bass are. So let's get back into the shallows over there where the sun hasn't quite come off yet and see if we can pull another one out today because we are on a little bit of a roll. What I'm using is this, is this uh, perch lure. I'll show you this real quick. So this is an imitation of a, I believe it's a yellow perch. And we do have these in this lake. So this is something the pickerel might actually expect to see or something similar to that. They might actually expect to see in here. Now, whether it's the right season for a tiny little baby perch or not, I have no idea. But it at least looks like something they're used to going. At. Oh, that was a hit I just missed. Another one hit it. They are right up there on the shore. Ah, number three of the day. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that one's decent. And I'm not getting my hands anywhere near this dude's mouth. Maybe he'll throw that lure up a little higher. 